I attended Fantastic Fest this year, so let's go over all the films I watched and rank them from worst to best. Hey everybody, my name is Justin here. I try to watch everything that hits theaters and on streaming services. If you guys are like me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and click that notification for more up and coming content. I was able to attend Fantastic Fest remotely this year. It would have been so cool to actually be there in person seeing films throughout the day, but I got to see a bunch of films that I don't think I would have watched this year. So it opened myself up to new directors and just experience different films. If you saw films at Fantastic Fest, I would love to hear about the ones you saw and rank them down below. Coming in last place, The Spirit of Halloween Town. I hate putting one in last place, but this is the one that I enjoyed the least. I still think it is a good documentary. Focusing on Halloween Town in Oregon, I went there in 2015. I had a pretty good time. I like that this documentary did focus on the highlights of all of the people coming in and uh, people loving the Disney Channel original film. You have a lot of citizens that live in this town that that liked all that attraction. They liked that there's so many people here in September and October, but then you have the other side of it all where people really despise it and they think that it's really ruining their town. You have some conversations that feel like they go on for a little too long and aren't the most impactful or the most engaging, like one where a business owner is responding to a negative review in a negative way and so it's creating this tension for him and his workers. I think that would I think that went on for a little too long. I would have liked some more clips of uh, Halloween Town and uh, the movie itself would have been cool, but I do think that there's some interesting conversations, even if it goes on for a little too long. Coming in at number nine, Touched by Eternity. This is a vampire film. As this man that is obsessed with eternal life and has tried many ways to become immortal, he is now approached by vampires. And we see how he navigates becoming a vampire, people's reaction, uh, trying to hide all of that, and the thirst for blood. It's a nice way to bring uh, someone that was just turned into a vampire and showing their story, kind of diving a little bit deeper into it. It's a, it has some comedic moments, but I never felt like that was the target of the film. I never really laughed too much within here. I was more impressed with the style of this movie. It is a little bit of a slow burn, but there is enough to supplement this movie with their character and his obsession with eternal life and becoming the vampire and seeing that progression uh, to see that see that progression of that character and watching him uh, transition more into a vampire. It's got a nice look to it. It's a very simple film, but I did enjoy this movie. Coming at number eight, The Severed Son. This is a folk horror movie with a lot of chilling moments, and the performances are really good in here. They add a lot to the atmosphere within this film. This young woman lives in an isolated church community ruled by her father. We see how he is controlling a lot of things within this community from uh, attending church and helping out within the community. But when a man is murdered, there's paranoia within this small community and people believe that a beast is called upon. There's a lot of haunting imagery within this film of the beast lurking in the background when certain dark sequences are approaching. You see the beast and at times it's very subtle. At times it's like, oh, it's right there. We can clearly see it but I like that the way that it was presented in the background of this film. And so you have that a lot of the paranoia that sets in within this movie and watching our characters uh, really fear the beast. It's pretty violent at times and it's well acted. I was impressed with the acting within this film and how it's able to add a lot of depth to our characters and the tone of the film and its story and seeing that community and uh, the hatred that some people have for each other and the intensity along the way is definitely a strong part of this film. It's beautifully shot for a more low budget film. Uh, the scenery, the, the beast in the background, all of it looks really good. It's a really impressive folk horror film. Coming in at number seven, Spermageddon. This was a very interesting film. It's an animated film uh, with sperm. And you have characters uh, in, 
you have these sperm characters that are trying to be the main sperm and uh it feels like a, a classic animated movie with that story of an adventure and uh not trying to go too much into detail with everything but you have uh human characters and uh they are having sex for the first time and uh these characters uh have a very endearing storyline it's really awkward at times uh and uh there's some clumsy moments amongst the two and it leads to the sperm having uh, a different adventure i like this movie there was humor there was heart to it there was graphic moments for our adults but i th thought that this movie was very genuine with its approach and trying to be something very different and very adult and so with that you have this nice balance of a decent story throughout for both the sperm characters and the adults coming at number six mr crockett this is a hulu original film that's set to come out in a couple weeks and it feels very much like nightmare on elm street where you have mr crockett that's very similar to like mr rogers he is a kids television host and there's vhs for him he tries to help kids that are part of an abusive family he comes out of the television set tries to hurt the parents and take the kids into his show there's a lot of practical effects in here that give it a nightmare on elm street vibe where you have a lot of like creatures or things that mr crockett is controlling to hurt the parents and Elvis Nolasco as Mr. Crockett is very haunting, very sinister performance, just downright disturbing as he is interacting with the parents or the children. They start to do something with this character to where you start to understand a little bit of his motives and you start to understand things where he's coming from. It's violent at times, very bloody. I like the overall vibe of this movie and its time period the VHS coming out of the TV and all the practical effects. This was a pretty cool film, very unique, but I also like it, how it was I feel like an inspiration from Nightmare on Elm Street and all the practical effects and all of that while trying to be kind, but also that could be uh, unwelcoming at times and very off-putting. So I like this movie and I can't wait for everybody to check it out on Hulu. Coming in number five, Frankie Frico. This was a wild film, felt like Ghoulies and Gremlins 2 and the Garbage Pell Kids movie. The designs for Frankie Frico and his friends were absolutely insane. I love all of the, the creation of making this movie look like it's from the 80s from uh, little home uh, decor and equipment within the, this film. But we have this young man who um, his girlfriend doesn't believe that he could have a good time while she's away. He calls this number that he sees on the TV, Frankie Frico, and it's promising a fun, wild adventure, a party. And that ensues a really just chaotic night. This film is wild. It starts to become more violent as the film goes along, but it's just a really entertaining movie with our characters and it's very bizarre the end of this film though becomes a little too jumbled like they try to take on many ideas at the end of the film but i still managed to really like the tone of this movie and all of the wild characters it's just insane throughout it's got like this great vibe to it if you liked the classic look of some of the creatures from the 80s and Garbage Pail Kids, I think you'll really have a good time with this movie. Coming in at number four, Apartment 7A. This is a prequel to Rosemary's Baby that does feel very familiar. The story feels like it's been there before. Essentially like the same thing for Rosemary's Baby, but you have the two elderly, uh, you have the elderly couple that was in Rosemary's Baby that's trying to do the same thing, but for Julia Gardner's character. And that's where a lot of the similarities lie within this film. It does try to venture into more of the horror territory with a lot of haunting imagery that worked in rosemary's baby but that psychological um aspect the the terror that was in rosemary's baby is translated nicely to this movie it looks great and it's well directed the performances are very strong especially coming from julia gardner who is able to 
focus a lot on trying to have uh, this fame in New York City. So whenever she's presented with things that are rewarding to her, she's going to take that. And so she sees these opportunities and she's going to go for it. But see this character become less reliant on all of that and become more independent. It's a very strong transition for our characters. Although the story does feel very familiar, that adds more depth to what was going on in this apartment building in regards to the babies and rituals and everything, all of that, trying to control things within this apartment building. It just adds more layer to the story. So I did like Apartment 7A. Mostly for, mostly for the performances and the overall tone of this film. They're able to do nice things for this prequel to Rosemary's Baby. Coming in number three, AJ goes to the dog park. This is written and directed by Toby Jones, who has worked on some shows for Cartoon Network. This, I will say, is not going to be for everybody. It is very silly. Very, very silly. A very low budget film, and they are aware of that. It's within the trailer. They are stating that it is a low budget movie, but my gosh, you feel the love for this movie. I laughed so much in AJ Goes to the Dog Park, more so than any film this year. This is constantly entertaining. There are visual gags every few seconds. They do not waste any time. It, tr it does not take itself too seriously. It is beyond silly but I absolutely loved it. It's not the best film of the festival that I saw, but I would say it's my favorite one. It's the one that I enjoyed the most. It is constantly going. It is constantly funny. Visual gags. They reference so many different things within here and just seeing how they were able to insert these gags within the film and the jokes it just flows so naturally you feel like films that are constantly funny and have visual gags that don't take itself too seriously i think you'll enjoy this film it feels like that where just the jokes are just constantly flowing the performances are fun everybody's just having a good time we understand that's a low budget film that's part of the drive to this movie aj goes to the dog park I had a blast with this. I laughed so much. Coming in second place, VHS Beyond. I haven't really enjoyed a recent VHS film, but this one was very strong. One of the best films in the franchise. Every segment within this film is good. All of them feel very different, but they all, most of them, there's one that doesn't, most of them do focus on like alien life form and uh, outer space and all of that. Uh, you have some very bizarre things that happen, but each storyline feels very different. And you're bringing in a lot of great people to direct some of these, like Justin Long. You see a lot of inspiration from his segment to the film Tusk that he was in. But with so many different styles, like almost like a video game style for the first one and some UFOs for some later ones, there are some crazy things that happen but every single segment is intense, bloody, and somehow managed to top the previous one. When it comes to a VHS film, there are some segments that I like, some that are just kind of boring, and that's where it kind of, some of them just kind of, uh, the overall film isn't very good. But when you look at this film and every segment hits, that's what makes it so good. I enjoyed all segments and how everyone was intense, some very bizarre things, and like that they focus on aliens, except for one of them, which involves dogs, which was very creepy. So the overall tone uh, is very disturbing at times. I loved every segment, so I really had a good time with it. And uh, seeing the different styles of stories within here brought a lot of unique moments to this film. But coming in first place, Will and Harper. This is a Netflix documentary that did premiere at Fantastic Fest. And it is a documentary focusing on Harper Still and Will Ferrell, two best friends and Harper Still. And Harper Still transitioned into a woman. And Harper and Will go on a road trip throughout America for like two weeks to uh, experience uh, things that Harper loved. She's afraid that when she goes to these places that it will be hard for her. So they go to basketball games, the Grand Canyon, different places that Harper really loves. This is a very sweet, genuine, emotional documentary film that highlights uh, Harper's struggles transitioning into a woman and looking at the relationship between her and Will Ferrell, 
what's going to be some challenging moments, but it allows for some genuine uh, personal conversations amongst the two and seeing Will Ferrell uh, try seeing Will Ferrell react to everything and just be there for Harper. It adds so much to Will Ferrell as he's not portraying anybody. He's himself. And so we see how he's able to react to everything and just, just build off of that relationship that they already had. And Harper still, we see a lot of um, things that she's done in the past when she's worked on uh, SNL segments and written films for Will Ferrell. We see all the things that she's struggling with as well, and it adds uh, to that that journey, that very personal journey for her. I love the, seeing them two talk to each other, just have heart-to-heart -heart moments. It adds so much to that relationship that was already very strong to begin with, but just adds so much more to it. Very emotional, very heartfelt, funny. You see Will Ferrell just be hilarious throughout this but also break down and have some, like I said, heart to heart conversations between the two. I love that personal touch to this documentary. I love, it's the best film I saw for Fantastic Fest and a great Netflix documentary as well. So there you guys have it, all 10 films I saw during Fantastic Fest. Let me know the ones you saw down below and how would you rank them? My name is Justin Watches Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.